So let's get to it. Is the maritime deal good for both sides? Or in other words, is it a win-win or a zero-sum game? And as always, let's begin with a quick fire round of 30 seconds each and pick up the conversation right after. Mr. Abdul Hussein, please take the lead. I think whenever there's a deal or any kind of resol resolution of, of dispute or conflict, it's always a win-win. It's always a good deal. Well, that's a short and precise. Uh, Mr. Yitzhak Lebanon, uh, do you agree? I think that there's a lot of confusion uh, due to the fact that the Israeli government and the Lebanese, by the way, did not publish the uh, details of that agreement. But at uh, the level of the principle, any agreement will change the situation of uh, uh, violence into a stability, and this is a good thing. Last but definitely not um, least, uh, Dr. Ismail, your thoughts? Well, I actually uh, agree with both uh, panelists. Um, it is, well, the fact is that there is a deal. Uh, from the few details of what we know about it, uh, it is a reasonable deal. It is not perfect, and uh, no side uh, took got everything they wanted. But, uh, you know, that's the nature of international politics. Okay, we can wrap it up then. I'm just uh, kidding. Please feel free to interact in uh, the conversation uh, from this point uh, uh, onwards. Let's start uh, with the Israeli uh, side or the Israeli objectives. As you've all accurately illustrated, the details are still up in the air, but it appears that every single person has already uh, came up with an opinion. Um, is Israel gaining only what it already had? Dr. Ismail. Um, no, because we have a recognition of the maritime border, which is an international border, of course. There is a recognition in the first few miles uh, of the line that Israel wanted, uh, which is a very important area from a security standpoint. Uh, the fact that uh, the, gov the Lebanese government is recognizing this border has, uh, has a lot of weight uh, into the future. Uh, the, of course, Karish, the Karish uh, uh, field is uh, was is now recognized completely as an Israeli field and part of the kind of field as well. Uh, and of course, there is the bigger context, the international context, the need for new energy sources and so on that we have to always remember that international dimension which probably was part of the pressure to finish the deal now that we have been talking about for the last what 10 12 years so um uh, all in all it's an it's an okay situation i guess an okay situation and ambassador lebanon uh, did did israel pay essentially in oil and gas or in other currency for its future security is it a sort of a protection money so to speak no i don't think so uh, first of all i think that the fact that we have reached uh, um, you know, a kind of a deal, a kind of understanding where a proposal uh, sent by the Americans accepted so far by both sides. I think this is very important, uh, a very positive, and we have to go on. The problem is that the detail is, uh, the devil is in the details. We don't know exactly because we have a lot of statement coming from the United States, from inside Israel and Lebanon. For instance, uh, Lebanon uh, said, you know, a, an hour ago that tomorrow morning they will send some amendments to this deal. So what are the amendments? Israel is going to accept these amendments. Secondly, the Americans, uh, the ex, you know, uh, ambassador and the ex mediator before Amos Hochstein, he said that uh, Lebanon uh, received 100 percent of what she asked and requested and Israel zero percent. So there is a confusion here, and I think that the best will be to publish all the details so everybody in the public and the officials can express themselves. But I think, in principle, it is very important to push forward 
to reach that agreement, to implement, you know, all the articles and to reach a stability to this region because it is good for both sides, Lebanon and Israel together. Um, um, Ambassador Lebanon, uh, but if uh, clarity uh, was uh, available, no one could make political gains. Come on, what's wrong with you? Um, uh, Mr. Abdullah Hussein, let's move uh, to the Lebanese side. Uh, we've heard a very moderate version or a quite moderate version of uh, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah this uh, Saturday, not mentioning Israel, but uh, is saying that uh, he will be supporting any stance of the Lebanese uh, 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 leadership on that uh, issue. How involved is Hezbollah in this process? I think he was trying to be modest. I think he uh, runs the government. The whole thing is his idea. Hmm. Uh, the state works for Nasrallah. And uh, the uh, Lebanese media today was rife with reports that uh, Nasrallah uh, got a copy the minute uh, uh, President Aoun got his copy. Uh, so all of this is, is just Nasrallah's work. Now, is this who won? Is this an Israeli victory? Is this a Lebanese victory? I think the uh, Lebanese have a saying that talks about the fish in the sea. So the whole thing is still fish in the sea. Uh, no one is sure whether, whether Qana has gas or not. This is a huge gamble for the Lebanese. If Qana doesn't have gas and, and, and Hezbollah is expending some political credit because this is some sort of agreement with Israel. They, they won't call it agreement uh, because there's no uh, direct connection between the two sides. But this is uh, a recognition of an Israeli will on how to draw the border, the maritime border between the two sides. So Hezbollah is gambling. They're expanding some political capital with this space. And in return, they're hoping that there'll be gas. But if they gamble and there's no gas, then uh, there's 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 no return out of this. And, and Nasrallah himself in previous speeches, he said, we're interested in gas. Uh, we want to eat grapes. That's what he uh, huh. said verbatim. <laughs> and if there's no gas, I think the whole, the whole thing, the whole plan will, will just blow up in his face. Uh, you know, it brings me uh, back uh, to uh, Yasser Arafat's uh, refusal when uh, he was handed out a, a map and a pen and uh, mediators back in the days uh, asked him, urged him to draw his ideal map, uh, the ideal borders of, uh, of a potential state. And he said, no, I have no mandate to do so. I'm representing the Palestinian people and I will simply not do that. So my question to you, uh, dear gentlemen, is uh, whether the mere existence of this deal, even though, as you've uh, said, is not directly between Israel and Lebanon, but rather vis-a-vis -vis the American mediator. Could it pave the way for potential direct communication, or is it merely about this standalone issue, Dr. Ismail? I don't think that it is. Uh, uh, it will. We'll see uh, any a direct uh, negotiation between Israel and Lebanon. Not anytime soon. Of course, there's always uh, there are always messages between the two governments behind the scenes. And by the way, we have to remember this agreement. Whatever is written in it, in terms of details, there will always be a dimension that we will not see. A lot of things that happen behind the scenes, and a lot of uh, understandings between the intelligence services, between uh, all kinds of interests and uh, and, uh, and needs of this country and the other country that nobody talks about in public, that we will not know. So sometimes the optics, uh, not sometimes, they're always, uh, always deceiving. Uh, that's a very important point. So um, there are... I, I would assume that it would take actually years before we know everything about what went on behind uh, the scene. Again, I want to underscore, we live in a world now that is about to become very hungry uh, for energy very, very soon. We're walking into uh, a situation that there is a potential for a, a major crisis of energy, especially in Europe. And uh, it could very well be the case that uh, a superpower, the United States, has placed a lot of pressure on both sides, uh, something that they will probably will not say uh, out in public, uh, simply get, put the pressure on them of just get the deal going on so that we can start uh, extracting 
uh, the gas from Karish and maybe in the future Ghana. I really hope for Lebanon that they will find uh, gas there and a lot of it. Uh, so instead, Lebanon of, needs it. instead of follow the money, follow the uh, oil, we have seen uh, some remarkable events uh, recently that has to do with the American interest in, uh, in oil and gas uh, here in the region. Uh, and that brings me to my next uh, question, uh, Mr. Uh, Abdul Hussein. What's in it for the U.S.? Well, I think the U.S. Uh, works for stability. It's been working for stability in Lebanon uh, with or without a deal. Uh, the U.S. is bankrolling, technically bankrolling the Lebanese army to keep the state together. Uh, the U.S. is uh, arming the Lebanese navy to keep refugees from uh, departing Lebanon and, and, and crossing to Europe. And the United States is also funding WFP programs to make sure that all these refugees and impoverished Lebanese will have enough calories, daily calories, and, and food to eat to prevent famine. So the United States has been engaged in making sure that Lebanon does not fall apart. And of course, we know that, that a, a failing state can be a huge source of narcotics, uh, a source of terrorism, which Lebanon is, already is. Uh, so the U.S. is involved in this. The U.S. would want to see more deals and more agreements and more stability. Uh, I don't think Nasrallah thinks of this as a deal. Uh, I think he he still thinks that he can get away with this. He wants the gas, he wants the money of the gas because Lebanon is sinking. And after he gets the money, he thinks that he can still um, uh, see uh, a Jews pack and go back to Europe. So his idea is still the same, but I think he's trying to be pragmatic only for the sake of, of the economy and the money uh, to keep his base and Lebanon together. Yeah, having the cake and eat it to the uh, Lebanese diplomacy version, uh, uh, if you will. Gentlemen, we're taking a very short break, but we'll continue our discussion uh, right after amidst uh, two uh, very challenging political climates, both in Lebanon and in Israel, is timing everything in this uh, respect. We're taking a short break but we'll be back with the rest of the summit in a tiny bit. Don't go anywhere. So let's get to it uh, and begin with another quick fire round of 30 seconds uh, each. Uh, here in Israel, an extremely fiery political climate in Lebanon, persisting uh, instability. Should the people have a say on this uh, type of a deal or more simply should the deal uh, include a referendum of the citizens uh, ambassador Lebanon please take the lead well I don't think that we need any referendum you know Israel is not used to have referendums even you know uh, with the uh, uh, other things that we had we never want for a referendum but actually yes the public has to know all the details of the deal because the, the people is the media, the people are the officials, the member of the Knesset and all the others. So yes, we have to know what it is in this deal. Uh, the, the third point is, uh, to my understanding and speaking with some uh, illegalist people here in Israel, yeah. it's enough that the security cabinet will adopt it. Yeah, and we'll talk about it in a split uh, a second. Dr. Ismail, your thoughts? Yeah, there is the legal dimension. The, I agree with the with the ambassador, of course. Um, I, I do, the people need to talk, need to voice their opinions, and they do that in parliament. This is exactly the jo the job of a parliament. Uh, these uh, elected officials, they are the ones who should be reviewing the deal. Um, more specifically, the committee on, on uh, the, the committees and the subcommittees uh, that are uh, spe that specialize in such situations, especially those ones that can be exposed to secret information. So uh, yeah. um, definitely, this is how you do this. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as a referendum, no. Yeah, and um, Mr. Abdul Hussein on the Lebanese side, should the Lebanese people have a say? Well, first of all, this is not a treaty between two governments, so it does not treat, mm -hmm. it does not uh, need ratification at parliament and parliament or any kind of referendum. This is an agreement where every side will deposit their maps at the UN. So I think the uh, ruling cabinet, any cabinet, should be good enough. Anyway, in Lebanon, whichever cabinet is in power, Nasrallah is calling the shots. So there's no alternative in this case. <laughs> well, it's a no-brainer, so to speak. And feel, feel, please feel free to interact from this point uh, onwards. And my question uh, to you, gentlemen, is. Uh, at this point in time, what can go wrong? Or is it a done deal or nearly a done deal? Mr. Abdul Hussein, please. 
Uh, well, I think it looks like a done deal because uh, the Lebanese have come really far uh, in, in this. Uh, you know, and for Nasrallah, it's really hard to even recognize, even talk uh, to uh, to Israelis. Uh, in previous rounds of talks that they held in Naqura in southern Lebanon, the uh, uh, Lebanese delegation was so absurd that it would look at the UN mediator and never look in the eyes of the uh, Israeli delegation. So we're talking about a situation where these guys never recognize or even talk to Israel. Yeah. And now they're, they're agreeing to have a matching set of maps on both sides. So I think they, they, they are serious and I think Nasrallah needs the money. He wants the gas. And that's why that's that's what's pushing him. If had had Lebanon not not crumbled, the Lebanese economy not crumbled like it's in free fall right now, I don't think Nasrallah would have ever thought of this. Thing. And Ambassador uh, Lebanon, I must ask: this agreement, as we've uh, been mentioning, been in the making for uh, a decade or so already. Uh, couldn't it wait another? month for not an in-between government here in Israel to green light it and avoid all political speculation surrounding it? Well, to be candid with you, uh, I was following up, you know, this debates 10 years ago, and I am very familiar with all the details, including uh, the, the Hof mediator and later on. In my mind, we have uh, better signed this agreement a long time ago and not to wait after the elections. Uh, you see, the problem is that according to the law in Israel, it's enough that the cabinet will approve it and they will send it to the Knesset. And, uh, the law doesn't ask the Knesset to vote for that. Yeah, just I to think present that it. Now, yeah, I think that now uh, Hezbollah, uh, it, it is a done deal in my mind because Hezbollah is looking now for the next events and for next steps. And the steps that he's looking for is not the gas in Karish and this is not the gas in Kana, but rather who will be the next president of Lebanon. He would like to have an ally in Baabda Palace. And secondly, he would like to see what kind of government Mikati is going to, con to constitute mm. because he would like to have some ministers for Hezbollah in this cabinet although he have lost a lot of seats in the elections. This is what Nasrallah is looking for in the coming weeks. And, and Dr. Ismail, generally speaking, or rather in a broader sense, is politics hijacking uh, policy from the Iran nuclear deal through the Lebanese uh, uh, issue? It seems that uh, society is unable to conduct any uh, debate of substance and it's trapped in the political context. Policy is always the result of politics. Uh, it's just the mechanism and the outcome. And I know some people disagree with that, but that's the, the school of thought I follow. Um, and uh, again, I think that the, a lot is missing in terms of understanding the, the mechanism uh, that uh, produced this agreement at this time. There were probably uh, a, specific, a specific window of opportunities that has to do with the general context of what's happening in the region. There is a very important word we have not mentioned tonight, which is Iran. And uh -huh. when you speak Hezbollah, you speak Iran. Iran is a specific situation right now, uh, and that projects into Hezbollah. Hezbollah. Hezbollah only two months ago was referring to the United Nations as an occupying force in southern Lebanon. Uh, the relationship between Hezbollah and the UN are not that good, I have to say that. Uh, and uh, so there is an alignment of stars in a way, okay, that made it now possible. And if we include into that the, the international pressure to find as many or develop as many energy sources as possible, then it is very possible that the two parties simply had no choice. They had to react to respond to that pressure. It is and, possible. And perhaps similarly, uh, and I'm drawing a very uh, delicate uh, uh, comparison here, similarly to the green light the uh, UAE and Bahrain received from uh, Saudi Arabia to Saudi Abraham, of course, it's unlikely to assume that Hezbollah did not receive a green light from Tehran to pursue this maritime uh, deal uh, uh, with uh, Israel. Uh, uh, well, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, this uh, discussion. Uh, hopefully, we'll have more details on this pending uh, deal soon. Uh, Ambassador Yitzhak Lebanon, Dr. Fadi Ismail, and uh, Mr. Hussein Abdul Hussein, thank you very much uh, for your time. We're out for a final break, but we'll be back with much more 